The um, biographical information is as dated as the picture. <laughs> I have eight grandchildren now. I thought my secretary had correct that. That's really the most important thing in there. But <laughs> I will speak slowly. If I say something that you do not understand, interrupt. Raise your hand so we can make sure that uh, my uh, Inglicom, what you call it? Oh. <laughs> it is a pleasure to be here. It was a pleasure to worship with you. Our new friend Sean um, did a paraphrastic translation on his laptop, and I profited greatly from the sermon. And I appreciate it as well, your coming to Christ at the end. This is uh, Pastor Sobert's topic. I have never in my life spoken publicly on this topic. I have had many of private discussion in my home and in small groups. So this is a, a, a new experience for me as well. And then add the cultural experience, this should prove to be a very interesting evening. Let's read from Leviticus chapter 25. Verses 25 through 28. Leviticus 25 beginning with verse 25. <clears throat> if a fellow countryman of yours becomes so poor, he has to sell part of his property. Then his nearest kinsman is to come and buy back what his relative sold. Make sure I'm in the place I want to be. No, I'm not. Okay, just a moment. Verse 39, I'm sorry, verse 39. The country of man of yours becomes so poor with regard to you that he sells himself to you, you shall not subject him to a slave's service. He should be with you as a hired man, as if he were a sojourner. He shall serve with you until the year of Jubilee. He shall then go out from you, he and his sons with him, and shall go back to his family, that he may return to the property of his forefathers. For they are my servants, <coughs> whom I brought out from the land of Egypt. They are not to be sold in a slave sale. You shall not rule over him with severity, but are to revere your God. As for your male and female slaves whom you may have, you may acquire male and female slaves 